This is where it becomes really important, the race for a vaccine. Because without a vaccine, we'll be forever fearful of a pandemic like this again. So I will spend some time on this section, but it really warrants a full uh, episode in which we'll talk about the progress made as we monitor the progress made on this vaccine. So what are we trying to vaccinate against? As I said, the coronavirus is an RNA virus, but this is the nuclear capsid inside. And this is actually what we call the structural protein of the virus. And then these are the membranes on the outside, and this is the spike protein. So between these two proteins, there are conserved areas. What we mean by that is that whether it converts from SARS-CoV and SARS apparent to the daughter SARS-CoV, and these spikes are mutating as we speak. There are certain proteins in the virus that are necessary for the survivors to replicate itself, what we call structural proteins. So the ideal vaccine would be to create a vaccine against a structural protein and a vaccine against spikes or some of these other proteins that are on the surface. And that is the race today. We've never seen this virus. But we have, thanks to the Chinese presenting very early on, the genetic signature, the genetic code of, of the capsid and of the spike. Having said that, this is a huge virus. Uh, when I said huge, it means about 30 kilobases, which is pretty large for a protein. So we have to find a way to create a vaccine that could teach our own cells about this protein and recognize it as foreign. This is akin to cancer, because when you have cancer, you have a mutation in your normal cell, and that mutation in the normal cell, very much like a virus, is an abnormal mutation that resides in your cell that can induce the cancer. We call that the neoantigen, and we need to engage our T cell as a neoepitope. There is no difference between that challenge versus this challenge of trying to find a vaccine against the equivalent of a new epitope by finding a way to teach our T cells to recognize either this or recognize uh, the nuclear protein and kill the virus itself or kill the cells which are infected with the virus. There's this concept of neutralizing antibodies. And what do we mean by that? Blood from people who recover from the coronavirus actually develop these antibodies. So it is possible then to take the blood from a patient that has survived or the plasma that has these antibodies and infuse it into a patient that's infected and allow these antibodies to neutralize, so to speak, the virus. These antibodies then are seen by our macrophages, called M1s in these cases, that phagocytose and kill the, the virus by actually eating them and breaking them down and destroying the virus itself, or taking the cell that is infected with the virus, and these antibodies would attach to them, and then we have our natural killer cells that bind to these antibodies and kill the infected cell. This is killing the factory. So this is what we call B-cell mediated immunity or humoral immunity. So the opportunity then to take as a short blood from people who have recovered as neutralizing antibodies and use these neutralizing antibodies to either kill the virus itself, induce our macrophages to eat the virus, so to speak, and induce our natural killer cells to link to these antibodies and kill the infected factory itself. If we then say, okay, we'd like really longer term immunity, and that is called cell mediated immunity, meaning you want to get to a point where your T cells have memory, so that the next time you have this infection, your body is ready for it, and you do not get a severe case of the infection, very much like how we're treating influenza today. We have now used and are using a modernized version 
of this common cold virus called an adenovirus. And so ironically, we're using a virus to kill a virus. And this adenovirus could be then taken and engineered, not with its own code, but with the code of that of the coronavirus. So the first step is to find that code, that sequence, which the Chinese have done and shared with the world. And now taking those sequences of either the N or the spike or the membranes and putting these sequences into the adenovirus. So you now have a vehicle or vector with this particular injection of this vehicle to infect your own dendritic cells. So this is the educator cell. This is the cell that needs to be trained so that you could take a T cell that is naive and start educating the T cell about this virus. Once you have this educated T cell, you have what we call activation and clonal expansion resulting in the memory T cell, and now you are vaccinated. So this is what we mean by cell-mediated immunity. The irony is that this virus vaccination is no different to what we are trying to accomplish with regard to cancer, because we could use this exact same vehicle, put in a, the cancer uh, sequence, which is unique only to that cancer, inject it into that patient, educate the dendritic cells, and now have educated T cells to go after the cancer cells. So this is a universal mechanism of your body protecting yourself not only against infection, but protecting yourself also against cancer. So to summarize, let me speak to the two mechanisms of how the vaccine works against COVID. On the one hand, you have B cell immunity and you have these neutralizing antibodies that either could be obtained from a patient's blood that's recovered, or what's exciting is actually being generated. If one could sequence the spike and go into a library and find these neutralizing antibodies, one could generate these neutralizing antibodies. And now these neutralizing antibodies would be able to be combined with natural killer cells. These could either be natural killer cells that your body is making naturally, and that could be stimulated with proteins that you could inject called IL-15, or you could give natural killer cells that you could grow off the shelf. So this is one way of inducing killing, as well as a vaccine, through what we call B cell immunity. This killing of the natural killer cells tied to the neutralizing antibody has a special term called ADCC. And then finally, within the neutralizing antibody, there is the opportunity to have this macrophage going from an M2 to an M1 to also kill. So if you look at this board, you begin to see the beginning of what I call the killing fields of the triangle offense, because you've got one and you've got two, and now coming to the third, which is the T cells. So between the, nat the natural killer cell, the macrophage, these are two of the killing cells. But what's m very exciting is the opportunity to induce longer term immunity, things we call T cell mediated immunity. And as I said, your body has never seen this COVID virus. So you have what we call an immature dendritic cell. A dendritic cell is ignorant about this virus. So how do you educate it? Well, if you had a virus that is not the COVID virus, but a, a virus that is safe to give, and that has been depleted of its ability to replicate, and such a virus exists called the adenovirus, and you place inside the adenovirus the COVID sequence, now you have the ability to take this adenovirus, inject it subcutaneously, and allow that adenovirus to educate these dendritic cells. Now you have a dendritic cell that is educated about COVID. And now we have the first time then an opportunity to take a dendritic cell and activate 
a T cell and cause this T cell to become a killer T cell so that this killer T cell then can go after a cell that's infected and induce what we call immunogenic cell death, kill the factory, and at the same time generate memory. So these are the two mechanisms of killing. I call that the triangle offense. On the one hand, you have a, na a natural killer cell, then you have the M1 macrophage, you have the dendritic cell and the killer T cell, all to get you to the memory cell. So this complex science, this complex board, should give all of us hope that this virus is not going to beat us. We have well-established methods now to be able to rapidly get to a vaccine and manufacture it. In the past, manufacturing of vaccines, as you could see, and still is, very cumbersome. The herpes vaccine, the pox vaccine, the influenza, mumps vaccine, etc., were manufactured through eggs and still are. So that's a huge challenge in terms of scaling the manufacturing of these vaccines until now, where we've now modernized using the adenovirus as the vector, putting the gene sequence into the adenovirus, growing these adenoviruses in large vats and injecting doses. So the opportunity now to get millions of doses and even billions of doses are very real. And I was excited to see that Johnson & Johnson and Barda entered into a billion dollar vaccine research trial to achieve exactly that. In full disclosure, we have exactly um, a adenovirus vaccine we have tested in cancer patients and we are completely committed as well to be looking at our platform. In the meantime, uh, this video put out by Janssen uh, and Johnson & Johnson very nicely demonstrates not only how this adenovirus platform is scalable, has demonstrated safety and can bring the vaccine to us earlier than expected. This vaccine video demonstrates very clearly how this antigen is built onto this adenovirus and how it can be used. What is really important as a flexion point is the race for a vaccine. Only then could we change the path of this pandemic and be ready for the next hundred years. But then we would really be in, in so advanced and be prepared for anything that comes along. And no way will the virus be able to take over mankind. I don't think our scientists of the world will ever tolerate that. In summary, we spent time in this series first saying that the COVID is yet to stay, but presenting at least therapeutic strategies that says help is at hand. We understand this. We can get there. We can be able to treat the patient with mild disease. We can treat the patient with severe disease. We can try and reduce the fatalities that happen today. But most importantly, we have a race for the vaccine, which we believe is close at hand. Again, with full disclosure, our scientists at our organizations at Immunity Bio, NanQuest, and NantWorks are working 24-7 to take on this race. We will be back in the coming weeks with another installment of the series in which you will look closely at the race for the vaccine. For now, we'll say goodbye with these images of healthcare workers here in California and across this country working at great risk to themselves on the front lines of the fight against COVID-19. Indeed, these are the warriors and the heroes of our time.